All right, bringing you down here, coming out of leg lift. Not a lot of forward momentum, so you can see you lift your leg, you lead with your hip, and you just you kind of stop here. And this is the moment your front leg starts to get out in front. When your front leg starts to get out in front, if you're not in a position to drive back here, so let me use this drawing tool. If this isn't that in that linear position, if it's vertical, then what this is going to want to do is just fly open, because you can't you can't drive here. You're just going to jump. So that's what happens. See, it just turns, and you're watching this front knee open and the back knee follow. It's because coming out of leg lift, you just stopped, and like I said, you leading hard with your hip like that kind of collapses it hip. You you go into abduction, you just get stuck, and then your front leg just keeps going opens up and then everything turns over into front foot strike. And then you hit front foot strike with no force pushing through your back hip. And then you get two, you get your glove side tucking to overcompensate. So if, if I'm hitting front foot strike and my back hip isn't driving my back shoulder, pulling away from my back shoulder, then I have to use the glove side because the glove side, pulling the glove side around, will pull around my back shoulder. At the end of the day, I'm trying to get my back shoulder to go around and forward so my arm can follow, right? I can either do it by pulling my back hip ahead, or if that doesn't work, I can pull my glove. But when I pull my glove, it makes me just spin because it, 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 it pulls back here. The back hip is pushing forward. The glove is pulling over here. So everything's just gonna follow, right? If the back hip's going through and, and, and the shoulder's following that, everything goes forward. If the glove pulls this way, then everything's just gonna spin. We're always gonna get more energy into the ball if we can take it forward. So because of that, if we look at how it was sequencing, so the, the red line is the hip rotation and the blue line is the glove pulling so your red line is way lower than your glove. So where do you think you're getting most of your energy from? Your glove, right? Now, usually, like a guy who sequences well, the glove is that high, but it's in sync with the trunk. It's moving with the trunk. But the hip is going off way over here. So you'd see the hip peaking up here, and then the, the green and blue going together. So the sequence of a kinetic chain, a perfect sequence, is hip, glove, trunk, arm which is the yellow okay so right now you can see your hip is peaking right there with your shoulder if we go to hip line shoulder line you can see it's the other coming together so you can see right here is a stop that's the hip peak and then the trunk peak there's no separation that's why this hump is supposed to be over here so if it went off right here that means your hips would be open, and then your trunk would go, and your shoulders be sh would be closed, or your shoulders would, uh, at that point, be closed, but they'd be open here. Right, so every everything's synced up and just spinning around. All right? And you're at the point where your arm is extended way out in front of your body. Ideally, you'd want your arm trunk forward, your arm turning over, because everything pushed forward. So it really comes down to when you came out of leg lift, when you came out of leg lift, you just collapsed your back leg, you stopped your momentum, your, your front leg, when it went to open, your, your, no power, so your back leg just collapses and turns over. So now there's no hip power. And then your trunk starts early with your glove pull and everything goes together. So the, f the first thing I showed you was the angular sequencing, so how things were rotating. Now this is the linear sequence, how things are going forward. Okay, so this is the same thing. Red is the hip, the blue is the glove, the green is the trunk, the yellow is the arm. Your glove goes forward actually right here. So your, your glove created forward peak. It created that little forward peak. Mm -hmm. And then your hip and trunk in the linear aspect are actually peaking together at the same time forward and then notice when you go to pitch release what energy is on at that point it's all arm. just your arm like ideally you'd want these two linear uh, segments with I mean the hip and trunk moving forward you'd want those going off right just coming out of 
like just shutting off and now the arm is taking all the energy it's too far away which means you know there really wasn't a lot of linear power going through your body mm-hmm. so it's like that's the key is getting the linear power through the body well i mean but what you're seeing is the all the potential for gains right that you have to build and develop and here's my thing you when you come into awareness of things you're not doing then it gives you an advantage because then you're going to work on that mm-hmm. right so that'd be the goal would be you know next time we do this you see the sequence you see hip going forward trunk going forward and then right off a trunk when the arm wants to go then the, then the arm is going and you don't see this energy shutting completely off mm-hmm. um, I think that's pretty much it it's just going to be and, and, and the thing is where does a lot of that linear energy come from it comes from down here in the legs if I keep more momentum going forward out of my hip I accelerate that momentum through my back leg also to create the angular release of the hips and my shoulders can stay closed then all that energy goes up into the trunk and then all that energy goes forward and that's what that's what you want to see